This meeting is being recorded. Okay, hello, hello. This is Willie Jones, and you've tuned in to another edition of the Working Woman Report. This is programming brought to you by the Women for Progress Radio Network. Thank you so much for another supporting edition this of the Working Woman Report. This is programming to brought to you over. by the Women for Progress Radio Network. Thank you so much for another supporting edition this of the Working Woman Report. This is programming brought to you by the Women for Progress Radio Network. Thank you so much for another supporting edition this of the Working Woman Report. This is pro- okay. Sorry about that. Uh, that's what happens when you're live. All kinds of things can happen. Okay, let's start this over again. This is Willie Jones, and you've tuned in to another edition of the Working Woman Report. We're here every Wednesday from 12 to 1, talking to dynamic women about their work and the impact of that work, not only now to the state of Mississippi, but across the country uh, to these United States. And we are so excited today, again, to be talking uh, to another woman who is helping move America. I want to say that again, another female who is helping move America. And you say, Ms. Jones, uh, what does it mean when a woman is moving America? That means that she's sitting behind 80,000 pounds of power and loaded and, and making sure that our goods and services are moving all across this country and even beyond our borders. So this is our second conversation um, uh, this month uh, with the, with those women who are rocking and rolling and doing so many things. And what's exciting is women who are changing the face of trucking. Women who are changing the face of trucking. And I'm so excited to introduce to you today, Miss, I want to say this right, is it Novaya? Novia Denise. Novia, okay, Novia Denise, Miss Novia Denise. And she's founder of Queens on Deck, and she's CEO of Dreamology Beauty, and she's the owner of Tribal Eyewear and Jewelry, and she's also a Class A and B instructor. So this this is a woman that's not only getting behind the truck every day and driving and doing wonderful things. As always, she's a woman of color who you know we always, we never have one job, one task, we always got a plan A and plan B, and it's obvious that she's doing many, many things in her particular arena. So I am so excited to have her with me today. I want to remind you that this is live here on Facebook. We're also at womenforprogressradio.com. Every time we have a live show, it's also available there, womenforprogressradio.com. And many individuals say, I don't like getting on Facebook, but I want to tune in to your broadcast and your programming around Women for Progress Network. Well, every time we go live on our social media, you can also get us at our website address at womenforprogressradio.com. We thank you so much. We ask you that if you miss this programming or you listen to the program and you want to share it with others, go to this page, go to videos, and that latest video will be shared there, and you can share it out to your friends and your relatives and and make sure that this message continue to move. So I'm going to get started because I have so much to talk to this this amazing person about. And I know that you might have questions too. And if you ask your questions in the comments, today I'm going to be watching it pretty closely. So if you have any questions for our guest today, I'm going to get tuned in over there to that site. And um, so that I can watch for your questions and, uh, and we can have this conversation together today. So thank you so much for tuning in right now. If you have a time, please hit out to your friends on, on social media. Let them know we have this conversation. Tell them to tune in to the Working Woman Report, which is always amazing programming. Okay, let's get started. Now, uh, welcome to the program, lady. I just love, love, love you. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here on today. Well, first of all, I want people to get your full visual because they look at this woman who has the fabulous hair, who has a beautiful face on and looking gorgeous and vivacious and like a queen and a Nefertiti. And they said, that's not a truck driver. Uh, so <laughs> right off, I want to give the conversation, start the conversation and say, Navaya, how did you get into this industry? Um, I mean, I speak to very few women who are in trucking to say, hey, 
I, as a little girl, I had, I, I was riding in my little toy truck and I just said, always, I want to be a truck driver. So tell us, how did you choose trucking? <laughs> it's very funny. I started out in the school system as a school bus monitor. Um, put myself through school, then it came the opportunity to get my class B's, and I became a school bus driver. So for many years, from being a driver time. to work Please. in the office, those time. were the things that I strive for. So um, the opportunity came around 20, 2016. One of my coworkers, they were like, I bet you won't go get your class A's. And I'm one of those people, if you challenge me, I'm going to do it. And it was also an opportunity to change my career and learn more about that transfer, about that side of transportation. So in 2016, I gave my notice. I stepped out on faith. I went and got my class A's and it's been, it's been a road ever since then. And so it was just pretty cool to get into an industry where you know, versus school buses, it's always a woman's industry. When you talk about the school system and school buses, you rarely see men. But then to transition into the commercial world of the class A and pulling tractor trailers, pulling 18 wheelers every day, it was totally different, a whole different world and, and, and whole different barriers that you have to like cross over every day. And we want, I want to highlight that too and put a pin in that because. You said that a lot of times when you when you when you see bus drivers, you do see a lot of women driving buses, and Correct. and then we know the thing about bus drivers too the the income is low, and then we think about the 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 commercial license where you the you you have the class A where you're driving at to eighteen wheeler the wages mm -hmm. is way higher and and that's a the man the, the a male dominated arena and that's why I'm saying to women is. You look at these industries where where you got a hard, large concentration of males and that majority males, you look at the dollars and that's where the money is. And I say right. to women all the time, it doesn't matter if it's uh, truck driving or if you want to become a plumber or electrician or, or any of those other no, what, what they call non-traditional careers, that's where the money is. And it doesn't matter. Everybody can't be a truck driver. Everybody don't want to be a truck driver. But there are other careers that you need to look at. And I want to say again that we we I want to try to come up with another term for these uh, the, these no, these non traditional jobs. And I say to women, these are opportunities. They're opportunities. Yeah. We can't look at it as non traditional because that sets up a wall. That sets up a border, a border to say that there's a there's a challenge to entry into those opportunities. So we want to say that these are opportunities that women need to check out. They need to be part of. So when you got into the uh, industry, Nevaya, what were some of the myths that Things that you th that that you might have ha learned from before, or even just had a vision about that once you got into the industry was totally all wrong, and uh, and 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 were a lot of mis un untruths out there about women being in trucking. Well, one of the things uh, I want to talk about the pay. Mm -hmm. The pay will be very hard at the beginning because. You know, you look at truck drivers, you're like, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to make this money, this type of income. But it's all about getting your experience at the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, I was I was blessed to have a trainer see something in me instead of just treating me like just one of other guys. He's like, listen, there's something in you, and you can be able to start doing different things that other women don't, don't normally do. So when you have someone that actually wants to push you to greatness, and they see you being a woman, that, that, that was one of the things that stood out and I did not expect to get because one of the things that they said was they're not going to respect you, which is true. The respect for women in the trucking industry is growing now versus then. Mm -hmm. And so that was one of the things that many challenges throughout the last five years since I've upgraded to my class A's that I've had to um, do and change. One of the other things they tell you, well, you're going to have to be over the road. Um, and that's one of the fears as women, especially mothers, if you're a wife, if you're a single mother, that you're going to have to be on the road all the time. I, I found that myth to be not true. There are companies that I, that I have researched myself and that I have actually worked for that will allow you to be home every day or either every other day. But I think it's 
of it's according to the person's preference. Mm-hmm. Um, one of what was one of the other things that we had to do? Um, <laughs> I had to get over being very soft because I was like crying about a lot of things. I'm like, I can't do this. This is hard. So one of the things I had to start learning how to make life easy at work mm-hmm. because I was always used to being around children, not being so hands on. And so now I'm here in the Chucky industry. I got to be hands on. I got to pull pull my fifth wheel pin. I got to go connect my glad handles. I got to tuck. I got to duck, look under things, you yeah. know, look under yeah. the truck. It's so many different components. So they say, oh, it's going to be a breeze. You're going to get through it. All yeah. these good things. And, you know, and you're like, this is not what I signed up for. Yeah. Yeah. This is not, you got to be so innovative. You might have equipment that's broke. And you don't have anybody, a mechanic, to get there. And you're like, you have to figure it out. Mm-hmm. So one of the things in this industry, it makes you figure things out and navigate your way where when there isn't a man present, you're able to do it more efficiently. Not taking away who a man is mm-hmm. in the world, mm-hmm. but it makes it more efficient for us. And also, um, one of the myths that I heard is that all women are hard. They don't, they don't, they don't, they don't dress up. They don't look. And so getting in the industry and to see women, girly like I am, they come to work, they pull the trailers, they pull the doubles and different things like that. It was such an encouragement. So it made me feel like I was not alone. And sometimes as women, we're going to these trucking schools. We don't see a lot of women. That's why I thank God for Sharia. Yeah. She trucking. She, she's, she's like they changing the standard of how women operate in this industry mm-hmm. and what we can do and how we can just break those barriers. So what they think, it, the old thinking is no longer the old thinking. The face has changed and we can have just as much, as much respect as the men. Girl, you preaching today, I tell you, uh, you're, you're hitting all the right buttons. And I want to highlight what you talked about when you say that um, about, you know, you have to really learn how to get out there and, and, and even learn things on your own when even there might not be there to somebody to say, okay, you need to do this or you need to do this. I mm-hmm. hear across the board when I talk to women is what they love about trucking is how they are empowering themselves every day, how they're learning to be be able to think uh, analytically, be able to make decisions on good decisions on the spot, to be yes. able to really count on your own skills and talents to get that load to point A to point B. And the main thing is to get it there and get it there well. And so I think when we talk about women, that's what's empowering. I think... If, if there's any message I want women to know about trucking is that how it empowers you to be all that you can be. Because women of color specifically, and then women in general, it, uh-huh. one thing that we have is we have these hidden talents that is uh-huh. never tapped into. Most of us are probably not even using but a fourth of the abilities that we have in our bodies, in our DNA, to make things happen. I think about, you know, uh, 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 biblically when when uh, uh, God made woman and he says that uh, he made woman to be a help meet to man. You know, when he says that he built woman to be a help meet to man, you know, he provided women something special because he what? says the women have got to be able to help these men, but he didn't. He didn't say God didn't say, well, "Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make her, and this is what her her task, and this is gonna be what her purpose is." But I'm gonna give her something extra. I'm gonna I'm gonna empower her with some skills and talents to be able to do this and do it well. So I believe women come to the table with some things that that men don't have. And let me tell you, I love, love, love. My husband passed away last year and he was one of the most incredible individuals on the planet. He was a blessing to me. He was a blessing to my family and his legacy lives on. But I'm telling you that when it comes to women, I tell you, we it is just exciting. I thank God every day for being a woman. You know, yeah. I am so grateful for that. And when we think about truck driving, 
the opportunities that are out there. I mean, I, I love that you talked about, you said that, yeah, we, we talk a lot about the opportunities out there, the over the road company, your major carriers and things like that. But what women have to understand is that when you get in this industry, or even if you're thinking about getting this industry, do your research. And it's a great opportunity for you to take this industry, you take this CDL license, you take this skill, you take this opportunity, and you make it your own. And uh, and that's why I'm excited about women like you, Navaya, and also uh, uh, Sherry, Sheree Moore, who's uh, running and CEO of She Trucking, and so many other women out there that don't get the voice that you all are getting on a day-to-day -day basis to say, we are doing this. There are women that's been in this industry over 20 years and more that have been doing it and doing it well. So I love the idea of, of you doing it. Now, we saw this amazing video, and I want to see if I can pull it up because I want folks to see you in action here, and we're going to play it. Let's see if I can get it going. If I can get my technology, I think I can. I, I thought somebody I said that women couldn't put sets so together nor pull them. However, here's your proof. So many times in a male-dominant industry, we as women get put down. We're told that we need to stay in a woman's place and that we can't do anything that a man can do. However, I'm here to empower women that you can do it the same way as men are even just as better. Female truckers I'm representing. Now, ladies, come on. Let's dominate the industry. I love that video, uh, Navaya. <laughs> Uh, I just love, love, love it. I think I've shown it so many times uh, since I seen it the first time on um, on sheet trucking. And I just want to thank you so much for putting that out there because it really put it in a perspective and it showed you doing your thing, as they say. And uh, I think that's wonderful. Now, I see you are, you are currently working at FedEx. Is that correct? Correct. Now, Correct. what is it that you like about FedEx? It, women, some women out there that might be looking at FedEx as an opportunity. Um, uh, why did you choose FedEx and how long have you been with them? I've been there for the last um, maybe four, three years now. I've been there three years now. And one of the things that I chose with that company was the, the opportunity to be home. Mm -hmm. I, I'll go like a, a, a certain amount of distance every day. I may go to like Tennessee, like my regular run is Tennessee, um, Atlanta to Nashville. So, I, and I'm home. And that's the lovely thing about doing runs like that with them. You don't have to always be on the road. So as a woman, as a mother, I want to be able to still enjoy life, see my children. You know, like I stated earlier, so many women think that you have to be on the road for so many, you know, be on the road every day. And that's one of the things that really... It, it puts a lot of fear in women because they're like, I have to give my family. I have to do this. Yes, I made a short-term sacrifice. And I believe God just favored me yeah. where I did my two months of training. I did my school. I did two months of training. I did like two and a half months over the road by myself. And I was fortunate to find a company that allowed me to do regional. And with regional, I was basically home every single day. Mm. I I I, I, ne I can't even tell you that I spent a day away from home. And so that is one of the things when we talk about making sure you do your research, see what companies have local position. Is it a company that's going to allow you to be able to be financially, have financial stability? Because that was one of the things I wanted to look into. Um, I, I, I wanted to make sure that if I was going to do this, I was not going to work hard. I was going to work very, very smart. So being at FedEx, it allowed me to work very smart, hard, but very smart, and still be graceful. You know, I have some men out there, they, they love seeing us. And then at FedEx, there are so many women. I see more women there working there. And it's so exciting. We see each other like, I see you, queen. I see you, queen. And it's so liberating just to see other women and, you know, we come to work, we're dressed up, we're glammed up. Not every day I may glam up, but when I do, it, it feels good mm -hmm. to, to see that. Mm -hmm. 
and and I I'm a, I'm glad that FedEx allows us to be that instead of always treating us like the men are as men, but some companies also do that, and so that's one of the things I love about them. I want to talk a little bit about preparation because I think that's so essential to women yeah. when they get into this industry. And I, I love the way you said that you you dress up, you get you you know you do your thing, but you still work hard. You t you talked about uh, preparation, doing the research, and that kind of thing. So if, if a woman is thinking about right now getting into the industry, what are some of the things that you would you would say? to her right now, she began to think about and prepare. Because like you said, you have children too. And I had one mm -hmm. uh, female trucker said to me that she set her children down and had a conversation with them because she mm -hmm. didn't want them to think that she was abandoning them because she was gonna be away from home. But they needed to understand and buy into her vision for what she was getting ready to do. Right. So talk to women about some of the major things that they need to start preparing for and even have a mindset, get a mindset change on. Yeah. So one of the things you want to start preparing yourself for is, of course, you know, get going to your local DMV office, getting your commercial driver's um, um, study guide. So those are one of the things that you want to make sure before you go to the schools, any school that you choose, you want to make sure you have your permit. But I also tell women, everybody brings up the first thing financially. How, how am I going to pay for this? How am I going to do this in order to get my certifications and, you know, to get, get, get qualified, to get your class A? Well, find a school that offers you training, free training, even though you will have to pay back, but free training to be able to stay for a year with the company and then pay off the debt from staying with them for a year, uh, that is good. Because um, a lot of major carriers, they do have trucking schools that will allow you to do that. Or you can go to your community colleges. Community colleges offer these classes as well. And if you are able to go to your DOL, which is your, your state department of labor, sometimes the state have funding. They have funding for these for these trade. Getting your CDLs is a trade. And as women, there's so many different things out here for us that they will be uh, that they will allow you to get with little of nothing. And also, if you are a woman, because I've been there, you know, government assistance. I, I can't I can't take that out because a lot of us, some women are struggling. They want to change their lifestyle. And they want to go from that to this and have a better life for them, themselves and their children. If your state department of family and children has a program, go to them. They will literally pay you to go to school. So those are some of the researches that I did so I can know how I can be able to go to school and go to school without being in debt. Because some, that's one of the things that we don't want to do. We don't want to be in debt. So once you find out those schools, those programs, Go ahead and choose which one is more efficient for you in your area. If it's not too far, so you have like major carriers like Swift. Um, I'm an advocate for Prime and Snyder. Prime and Snyder has some of the best training. They do give you. They do. Um, Prime does very extensive training, um, and you stay with them for a year. Your school's paid off. Snyder the same way. But the reason why I love about Snyder is that even with your training. You can still go regional and still be home every day. So that's one of the companies that I do advocate for because they give single women, mothers who are married, the opportunity to be home while you're still getting your experience on the road with them. So they are one of the things, um, one of the companies um, after you do your year with them and it's paid. There, um, there are other companies. Wanted, there's so many different companies, but it's all about your research what fits your lifestyle? And I love what you mentioned about talking to your children. So that was a talk that me and my children have to have, you know, to let them know, listen, I don't love you because I'm away for this long time. I, I'm doing this for us, for the benefit, for us to live a better life. So we're just, just, we're just not living in the enough, but we can live in the abundance of more than enough that God has uh, ordained for our life to be, you know? Mm -hmm. So those are some of the things that I would tell women, but do not get discouraged because you feel like it's not, I can't do it because of the finances. The finances is just the, the that's just one thing. Mm -hmm. But the next process is making sure that you are ready for the rough ride. It's not going to be peaches and cream at the beginning. 
And I always let a lot of women know it's not going to be peaches and cream, but it is what you make it and your mindset that you go in with. And when you go in with the right mindset, when you're going into the for the training school, that's going to change your whole trajectory, how your career in the commercial um, field is going to go. So those are some of the things that I would talk about with the preparation of going into the industry. And also, you don't have to be hard like the men. I always tell the ladies when I'm empowering them, you can still be classy. You can still, still be a lady. You don't have to go in there like, oh, you know, really tough. Because we know we're ladies. You know, we all have different lifestyles. We come from all different backgrounds. But it's okay to be you when you're going through the process of obtaining your career path in the commercial driving arena. Oh, you, you're giving so much great information. And I, and I love, love, love that. And, um, and, and I love that you keep saying and sharing with women that you can be, you can, you can keep your womanhood, even though you might be in a male dominated industry. Yes. And, uh, and I think that's, what's amazing. And, and I want to reiterate for those who are listening, DSC training Academy, uh, right here at our facility, our workforce development center, we offer scholarships for women. We have programs and she mentioned Snyder. I'm so glad that you mentioned Snyder. Snyder is one of our incredible partners here. So we have a program that you can come and enroll in right now for the month of July with no money down. And, uh, and Snyder wants to pay for the cost of your training here. And I love Snyder because also they have a real focus and an intentionality at Snyder when it relates to women. They are yes. really being intentional about coming on board. We know right now the market and demand for truck drivers are the highest it's been in a very, very long time. We've always had a tight market and it's always been a, a difficult demand uh, for, for truckers. But right now where we are at getting, at getting hopefully with the turn around COVID, it is a truck driving companies, motor carriers all over this country yes. are looking for ways to change their turnover rate and also to look for individuals that wants to use trucking as a sustainable way to for, for a sustainable career for themselves. So they're often all kinds of, I have three motor carriers who changed and increased their pay in the three times in the last six months because this wow. was so challenging. I have a local company here that uh, uh, is a home based in Mississippi that's starting out with training pay of $1,100 a week. That's crazy, crazy. $1,100 a week for training pay. Okay, so there's so many opportunities. I want you all listening to me right now to come see me at DSE Training Academy. We have a full staff of women uh, admissions people who would come in. You can come in, talk to them. They'll find a program that fits for you. If you don't like the Snyder program, or we have another program that's total, who's also Mississippi based. We have several other motor carriers all across the country that, that hire from our school. And so we, we have a program to fit you. And so we want you to come in. In the month of July, we have some discount cash programs. We have some scholarships for women. Don't miss this opportunity. We are really, yeah. normally we have a start class that starts every two weeks. In the month of July, we are starting a class every single Monday. Every single Monday of wow. July, you can get in this thing and get enrolled. And we're doing that because our motor care partners are saying, we need more folk. We need more people behind the wheel. And, uh, and so, uh, so we want you to come. Our program is a four week course, 168 hours. We have an incredible staff that's gonna do you right. That's gonna make sure that you have the information you need to get through to this program. Our website is drivingyourfuturems.com. DrivingYourFutureMS.com. And we do the, exactly that at our Workforce Development Center. We drive your future. If you want to call us, 601-351-5858, 601-351-5858. And you can also talk to an admissions representative, which will be able to share you about the opportunities, how you can get enrolled. There's an also application on that website if you want to start there. You, we also have a live chat, so you can, if you get any quick questions that you want to ask, you can do that from the website also. So we want to make it easy for you. I always tell people 
that here at DSC Training Academy, we provide jobs, training, and opportunity that has a clear pathway to success clear pathway success. We said, Ms. Jones, what does that mean? That means that when you walk in the door, you're going to know what you're going to do, what's, how to get to that job, the four weeks of training. You're going to know how to, how to go to work. You're going to understand all of those things. And usually by the second week, you've already even decided on what company you want to go with. So, um, so we want to let women know that you have opportunities here and please reach out to us. We are also working with the TANF program through the Department of Human Services. So if you're already on TANF or if you're TANF eligible, uh, there's some, uh, if you qualify, there's some workforce training dollars for you to get qualified there. So if you know some women that are on TANF or TANF qualified, you don't have to be on TANF, but TANF qualified, call us. We'll tell you what that means. And there may be workforce training dollars available to you for us to help you. So, um, so uh, we want to make sure that you get this information. Novaya, and I see Miss Tiffany has joined us too. And Miss Tiffany, I'll be with you. She's sitting in her truck. How about that? <laughs> but I want to talk to you a little bit more, uh, Navaya, because you're not only uh, doing, um, of course, this truck driver thing, which I'm so very excited about. But you, you, you just all over the place, lady. Um, and I'm so excited about these other ventures that you have. Now I wear glasses all the time. I, it, they're almost like a, a new pair of shoes. I love to wear different mm -hmm. ones. And, you know, we have our favorites that we wear on their vacation. But you have tribal eyewear and jewelry, and you yes. also have Dreamology Beauty. Tell us about that and tell the folks how you can, how they can get engaged with these products and services. So um, Dreamology Beauty is my beauty brand. I am a certified makeup artist and I'm also a personal stylist. So whatever your brand is, I go in, I dress you for the occasion, for your photo shoots. I go in there, I see who you are as the client and bring your personality out through your clothes, through your wardrobe. I do wool, um Excuse me. I do movie sets. I do those different things with the Dreamology Beauty side. Tribal um, Eyewear and Jewelry is a brand that I started in the midst of the pandemic. I was like, I don't want a boutique with clothes. Everybody got clothes. I want something for men and women. So um, Tribal was uh, it was a jewelry brand that I wanted to set geared to men and women, and also give men the functionality for eyewear, glasses, you know, sunglasses when they're on the trucks the little hand beads and everything for them so they can still look good while they have on the trucks. You know, ladies still look nice and pretty when you own the truck or either just out on a casual date. You're just doing mommy duties or you're going to the movies, whatever it is. That That is what tribal is. You have jewelry that is catered to your personality, to your tribe, to who you are in the world. So that is what tribal beauty is. I mean, tribal eyewear in jewelry. <laughs> well, sorry. Now, now, Navaya, where do you live? What state are you in? I currently live in the state of well, Atlanta, Georgia. Okay, wow. Well, I, I was just about to say, when can I make an appointment to see you? Because you're looking <laughs> fabulous today, lady. And I, what does they say? I want some of that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, but this is amazing. I love to see women in business, and we support women-owned businesses. So give us your website, because even though we can't maybe be, be in Atlanta to glam up and let you get us ready for our, our next event, we can also reach out and check out your products and services. So tell us where yeah. you, how we can get connected on your website. So um, Instagram, you can find me at Novia Denise underscore M-U-A. And you can do bookings through that right there. Um, our site is going through reconstruction. So we still have booking through Instagram. Also, tribaleyewearandjewelry.com is where you can go at to get your jewelry and your eyewear so you can stay looking good out here on the roads and everything. Well, you know, what we need to do, uh, Navai, is we need to do a live on-air show 
where you do a couple of stylings. I know there's a lot of women that listen to our oh, program and a lot of truck drivers. So we, we need to schedule something on that. So I'll, we'll get yes, together yeah. and do that. Even though we, re, though, those of us here in Mississippi may not be able to be physically there in Atlanta, we can tap into some of your knowledge uh, to make sure to get ready and, and give, give us some tips. So I think that'd be a wonderful, wonderful way to okay. engage. Uh, yes, but yeah. this is wonderful. This has been an amazing conversation, and I know it will not be our last conversation of ours. Yes. I got your inf I got your digits now, honey. So you're going to be hearing from me. We need to continue this dialogue around trucking, of course. I just appreciate you and give you a big pack on the back for continuing to engage with women. Tell them, them the 411, the real truth about trucking and the opportunities that are there, and more and more so than anything is. I give you a pat on the back for being a uh, walk in the walk, being an example of what women can accomplish in trucking and also helping us as I started this conversation today, change the face of trucking, change the face of trucking. And that's what we need to do across all of these so-called non-traditional careers. We need to make sure that there is no obstacles for success. And uh, so we thank you so much. You are powerful lady, ladies, and you're doing some amazing things. And I so appreciate you uh, and I honor the work that you do. And I'm so happy and so proud of who you are. And I'm so proud to be a sister that looks like you and, uh, and in this industry doing what we do. So thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. All right. We'll see you next time. Okay, the next person I have is um, uh, a lady that I love, 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 and we're so excited, and, and I asked her to come on today. I called her from her truck, and I said, uh, Tiffany, can you come in and talk to me today? I know you're celebrating your one year of OTR experience this uh -huh. month, and... And I said that I, I gotta I gotta talk to you. I gotta talk to you about what does this year mean? I wanted um, training. I wanted to go a little bit earlier. Okay. Uh, make sure Miss Navaya is off. Navaya, will you will you uh? Let me make sure that she's off. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. Great. Um, and I know that happens sometimes. I might not cut it off up too soon. Uh, so uh, first, I want to give you kudos and to, and an applause and a yay, yay, yay <laughs> for your one year of O2R experience because we cannot take this lightly. One year experience is amazing. And, you know, I was just talking to the meeting earlier today and someone asked me about the retention rate as it relates to women. And right now, from, from our statistics, from our graduates, our women are being retaining their jobs and staying in their jobs much longer than men are right now. And that's amazing news. So tell us, um, you know, what this one year means to you and, uh, and, and what are your plans beyond this, this year? <laughs> well, it doesn't even seem like a year. The time has gone by so very quickly. It seems like I was literally just in, in training school yesterday. And so it, it, it has been so much. I have grown so much in a year. I have um, challenged myself. I've set goals and I've, I've made those goals, which for me, it, it, it's amazing to be able to achieve um those things, especially financially, I've set financial goals and um, set some personal goals, and just to be able to achieve that has been so much. Um, and I, I look forward to the future. I, I look forward to setting even more goals, um, learning more as a truck driver, um, because I, you know, I never want to limit myself as a truck driver. So I don't want to get comfortable where I am, even though I've made a year. I don't want to exhale just yet. I want to continue to learn and continue to grow. So um, for me, the guys, the women. Well, one of the things even Nabaya talked about, and a lot of the women that I talk to, I think overwhelmingly that they have this in common is they talk about how trucking has changed them, how that they've made them better people, better that they feel like that they are really, really understanding who they are and know what their strengths are. 
And so, you know, I can imagine over the year, um, getting into an industry that you really wasn't sure about, had no clue about, you probably had all kinds of information coming from everywhere. What have you learned about yourself over this past year that you would like to share to women? And what is, what is it that about being now a professional female, professional truck driver that you're most proud of? I, on top of the list for me would be fear, because I think in the past I allowed fear to allow me to become stagnant, to keep me away from a lot of things. And when I first started in the trucking industry, especially in school, it was terrifying. I mean, it was just so much information, and I just didn't know if I could do it. I mean, the um, things that are involved that you have to to do as a truck driver I just didn't know if I could do it you know at times it was overwhelming but I stuck to it I um I, I you know I did the best I can with every move that I made and with that I realized that I, I don't have to let fear hold me back that I can conquer any fear that I have and you know when I did that for trucking I apply I realized that I could apply that to the rest of my life that, you know, if I can do this, then I can pretty much do anything. So it gave me a strength and a confidence that I, I didn't know that I had. And I don't really know if I would have been able to achieve that with any other career that I've had or could have, you know, uh, pursued. Well, that's amazing. And you've been with Total Transportation over the past year. And that's one of our partners here at DSC. And I want to remind people that you're listening in Total Transportation, one of our partners here has a great program also where they will help pay for the cost of your training. And we want you to reach out to us at 601-351-5858 and find out more about that program and how you get connected. Now, Total Transportation has a base here in Mississippi, but they are a national carrier, but they have a lot of different diverse opportunities. And so, Tiffany, you've been with the Total for a year. I know that you've had some really great experiences and met some really great leadership there. Um, and and so, um, I, I know that, um, uh, what, what was it about Total over the past year? Or even, let's just say, what was about Total when you first got into the industry that really helped you? What was it, what was there? What was it, what was the thing that really helped you for your first 90 days? Well, first of all, I chose Total because, you know, I wanted to to start with the company that I felt like that not only would I do my first year, because that's a big goal for all truck drivers starting out, if you can make it through that first year. I, but I, I didn't want to just make it through my first year. I wanted to be with a company to where I could see myself um, five years, 10 years. And what I loved about Total is seeing, you know, for one, it was a Mississippi company. Um, and I was able, I, because it was a Mississippi company, I would be able to route myself home if, you know, if ever I needed to just drop everything and come home, that I could do that. But once I got to Total, it was the support. Um, because it was um, a, a Mississippi company, it felt more like a family. Um, I wasn't just a number. Um, I feel like my fleet manager and my terminal manager and the planners, they know who I am. Um, and the first thing that um, I received when I got to Total was that I had a wonderful, wonderful, amazing trainer. Um, I really couldn't trade her for anything. I, I learned so much. Um, she gave me so much wisdom. She had been in the company for I'm sorry, driving for seven years. And she shared so much information with me. And that was valuable information that I've been able to use with throughout this year. And hopefully one day I'll be able to pass that information along to another um, lady driver. Well, uh, it's obvious that you've been very excited about your year and, uh, and you're definitely a success story. Also, I think the exciting thing that you've talked to us about also that the opportunity you had to bring your children along with you. What has that Most meant definitely. having your children with you and, and, and being able to have them out there on the road f with you? That has been a wonderful, wonderful experience. Um, I, that's one of the fears that I had starting this, um, this journey was, would it take me away from my children? How would they feel? How would this affect them? But I really feel, 
I am grateful that for the opportunity that I've been able to, to bring them along. Um, I've, I have two boys, and so um, they both get to come along, not at the same time, but I bring one along, and then I can tra- switch out and bring the other one along. And the wonderful thing about it is that they've been able to be homeschooled while they're on the truck, so they can continue their education while they're on the truck. They get to enjoy the adventures along with me. They get to see different states, get bond, and so it's been amazing. Yeah, and what would you say about mothers out there that's thinking about becoming a truck driver? What do you think that they need to know as mothers that have children and getting ready to be away from home and on the road? What would you share with them? Well, I would say for one thing, discuss their decision with their other family members because they're going to need that support from their family. So discuss with them, you know, what is it that they're doing? Why Why are they choosing this career? And also talk to their children. Say, hey, mom is going to become a truck driver and this is what's going to happen. But at the same time, even though I might be away from home for a little bit, we still get to enjoy wonderful things. I might get a chance to bring you along because now I'm at a different financial bracket. We get we can get to do vacations. We can get to do things that we've never done before. So, you know, communication is really, really key with your family members that you have at home and your children that you have with you. And I just tell, you know, I tell people all the time, just try it. I mean, you you once you try it, I mean, you won't regret your decision. And of course, I think one of the other myths, I think, uh, and, and even thoughts in the minds of women too is, of course, this still is a very heavily male dominated industry, even though more and more women right now are getting into to, to trucking. I mean, more and more women are, is flooding this market. And, but you're out there, you're interacting with other men. I mean, you, you either when you're backing out there at the dock or when you're at the truck stops or even engaging with your male dispatchers and driver managers and things like that. Um, uh, what has that been like? Have you received support from those, uh, your male counterparts? How has that experience been for you as a woman? Well, from the beginning, I have had a wonderful experience. I have to, haven't had any safety issues. I haven't at any point felt like I was in danger. Um, I ha- I've never had anybody to approach me in the wrong way. And the men out here, they're very supportive. Um, you know, anytime that I've needed help, I've always had someone to say, hey, ma'am, are you okay? Is everything okay? Can I help you? Um, and then, you know, the other ones who might not be so happy that we're out here, they just kind of go along about their business. And then, of course, you're going to have that. But that's with um, almost any industry. So, you know, I, I haven't had any issues. And I'm grateful for the experience that I've had. I've talked to other women as well. They've had the same experience. I, I don't know anyone who's had any safety issues out here. So um, I discussed that with a lot of other ladies, too, because I know that's a big um, safety, but I haven't had any issue. Now, what about staying healthy right you out there on the road? Uh, that's a challenge for women, even at home. It's definitely an issue there. on the road. It's definitely an issue on the road because you, um, I mean, there's every fast food place that's out here. But the best thing about, um, you know, the situation that I have is that, you know, my truck looks like an apartment. So basically, I have it set up like it's just like a condo. So I have a refrigerator, a microwave, I have a um, Keurig, and um, I have an Instant Pot. And so the best way to maintain your weight or not to gain so much weight is to make sure that you stock your, your truck as much as you can and cook as much as you can and don't eat at the truck stops because the temptation is going to be out there. You're going to see different things. You're like, well, I've had a long day. Let me just go grab a burger. And, you know, so that is that is a big temptation out there. But um, the way that the trucks are set up now, you can fully stock your truck. Um, I have a TV. Um, I don't think there is anything in my uh, that I don't that I need when I'm on the truck on the road. Now, what about exercise? Uh, now, look, I know 
The last time I got up in an 18 with the truck, I had to help. I had to be assisted, okay? <laughs> so uh, I know even just the act of getting in the truck every day and pulling up on that steering wheel, that in itself gives you a lot of, of exercise and getting out and, and, and hooking up your truck. And, and even more so when you got to get down and look up under that truck doing your inspection process. So you're getting, you're getting up and down quite a bit. Do you think women get enough exercise just in the job process or do women have to think about also some other extra things that they want to do? I don't think any of us truck drivers, male or female, get enough exercise. Um, it is a challenge. That is a big challenge. And that's something that the trucking industry is aware of. And they are right now discussing issues of how we can um, attack that. Um, but there are ways to exercise. And it's important to do that if you can, even if it's just 30 minutes. Um, at every truck stop, there's enough space to walk around if that's, if that's all you can do. Um, if you can bring some weights on the truck, um, I know some guys who are who were physically fit before they even um, began truck driving. They work out inside of their empty trailer when the trailer is empty. Um, they bring their their workout equipment with them, the, the equipment that's portable. Um, so it is possible. Um, you just kind of have to be creative, and you have to make the time for it, and you have to just conquer that procrastination we all have. But it is possible. But at the same time, it is challenging. But it is very important. Um, also, another thing that's important for, I think, every truck driver is to make sure that you have some self-care, some self-maintenance, so massage good, um, going to see a chiropractor is good, and just keeping your body flexible and um, just uh, in shape as much as you possibly can. Because it is kind of hard on your body, like you said, getting the, in the truck, unwinding the trailer, dropping the trailer, and things like that. So it does help to be um, somewhat fit. Now, I, I want to, my last question to you before we wrap up is I want to talk about mental health. How do you manage mental health out there? I know sometimes when you're out there in that truck, you're out there alone. Um, you know, even though sometimes we're able to take our children with us, but sometimes you're behind that wheel by yourself and you may be by, behind that wheel by yourself all day long and maybe, maybe even two or three days at a time. Now, of course, you're interacting with the, with, with the public, things like that, but how do you manage your mental health? What are some of the things that you do for yourself to make sure that you stay mentally well? Well, the wonderful thing I love about trucking is that when you're out on the open road, I mean, you just have all the opportunity to just kind of think about your life and just, um, you have the opportunity to just think on the open road. And for some people, that can be a bad thing. For others, it can be good. For me, it's good. Um, I have that time to myself um, when I am by myself to just think about where I want to go and the next step and, and, and things like that. But um, there are people who do get lonely and, you know, they might get bored. But there's uh, there's things that you can do, like podcasts. I love listening to podcasts. Um, I love listening to um, motivational um, videos, maybe on YouTube. Um, I, I do have a membership with Audible, which comes in very, very handy when I'm um, doing night driving. That helps a lot, tremendously. Um and also the biggest thing, and it seems like the most simple thing, but the biggest thing is just breathe. Mm -hmm. Take your time and just breathe. Because there's going to be some moments that your fleet manager is going to get you upset. People on the road are going to be driving crazy. Somebody's going to cut in front of you and you're going to get flustered. But remember to just breathe, to just take it one day at a time, one step at a time, and don't let it control your whole day. Remember, it's just a moment. It's something that just happened in that moment. But let it move, let yourself move on and just breathe and keep going. Well, I tell you, I've talked today to two powerful sisters, Navaya Denise, who is rocking and rolling. She's a commercial truck driver with FedEx and she has her own beauty line. And, uh, and also she uh, is empowering with her own jewelry line. Incredible. 
Tiffany is a mother of uh, 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 two children, two fine boys. She's a former spa and and uh, and uh, nutrition club owner who is now a professional truck driver currently with Total Transportation. She celebrates her one year of over the road experience with Total Transportation, and we give her kudos, kudos, kudos for doing that. We thank, thank you, you also, Tiffany, for always sharing your story. You've been here at DSE Training Academy, talked to our students and other women here. I'm always sharing your number with women who get in the industry. I keep your your number on speed so I can easily pass it out to them because I know you're going to give them some good information to, to help them on their journey or either help them make a decision if this is something that they want to do. So I'm so proud of both of you all today. If nobody, if you're still listening in, thank you so much for joining us today. Tiffany, thank you so much for taking the time on the road. Um, I want to say, uh, to give you full disclosure also, Miss Tiffany Hathorn is my daughter. I'm almost tearing up right now. I'm so proud of her. Uh, but Tiffany is my daughter and uh, I'm so excited. I can imagine I've been in the trucking and transportation industry for, for a little over 30 years. And I tell you, she had no formal desire to get in her mother's industry. And so I'm so proud that she chose trucking. I'm so proud that she did it on her own. She, she made the decision on her own. And when I say women choose trucking, because you have to choose trucking. I mean, it's not something you say that's on your regular list of careers that you want to do. When a woman decides that she's going to be a professional truck driver, she makes a choice, and it's a big choice. And when you make that choice for yourself, it comes with the whole idea that you are making this huge commitment to this particular industry. So thank you so much, Tiffany, for being out there. Thank you so much for the person you are. Thank you for encouraging other women. And both you, you and Navaya, I want to say to you all, thank you all so much again. And you keep sharing what you do. You keep strong. We pray for you. We want you to stay safe. We're so glad that you're doing what you do. And we're so glad that you are the strong images that is changing the face of America. And that's what we started out this conversation with today about women who move America. And we've been talking to Ms. Navaya, uh, Denise, and Ms. Tiffany Hathorn, who has helped moving to move America forward by providing and shipping and delivering freight products and services all across this country to families, to businesses, to restaurants, to medical uh, hospital uh, facilities and and, and companies and, and, and institutions all over this country to make sure that our country and our economies continue to rock and roll. I have to say these women who do this every day, they are warriors for America. They are warriors for America and they do exactly that. And so thank you all so much for tuning in to the Working Woman Report, where every Wednesday from 12 to 1 p.m., we're talking to women who move America and who are changing the face of America and doing it and doing it well. We also want to remind you, if you're interested in the work of our uh, network, Women for Progress Radio Network, uh, go to our radio site at womenforprogressradio.com womenforprogressradio.com or check out our organization's website at womenforprogress.net. Some amazing things are happening. You got to stay tuned in with us. Tomorrow night, Thursday at 5.30, our flagship program, the Women for Progress radio show, is live here on Facebook and at womenforprogressradio.com. Got another powerful conversation and great information to share with you uh, on every Thursday from 5.30 to 6.30. We want you to tune in. And we're so happy to have launched our new podcast this past Monday at 6 p.m. The incredible attorney Phaedra Robinson is the lead host for our new podcast every Monday at 6 o'clock called Legally Speaking. She's going to be talking to legal eagles, attorneys, women attorneys from all, not only within this organization, but all over the state of Mississippi about the issues that women face on a legal, uh, uh, that make decisions that impact their lives. This past week, we talked about wills. 
you know, what do you need to know about wheels? Wheels, wheels, wheels is so important. And, it, and it's not very clear because in the state of Mississippi, there are some laws that exist that don't exist in the other part of the country. And it puts obstacles in the place of women. If you lose your spouse, if you divorce your spouse, uh, the care of your children, the custody of your children, there's a lot of things around that. So if you miss that programming, go back to, go to this page and go to videos and it should be the very earliest podcast and it's called Legally Speaking. But every single Monday at 6 p.m. from 6 to 6.30, we're going to be talking about legal issues and giving women tips and information and sharing resources from a legal standpoint to help empower you. Our goal with this radio program is to continue to inform and educate our community, and we want to do that and continue to do that in many ways as possible. So tune in every Monday at 6 p.m. to Legally Speaking to the incredible attorney Phaedra Robinson, who's been on the ground, who's been working with nonprofits in her own law firm and other areas of company, lead that discussion every week at 6 p.m. with some incredible women. We thank my, uh, attorney Monique Montgomery, who shared with us this week on Wheels, 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 and she did an excellent job. But also, we want to make sure you tune in. We're going to be giving you some also some recommendations, some leads if you need to talk to some attorneys, specifically women attorneys on various issues. Uh, we're going to be sharing their information to you. So if you're looking for a, 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 an attorney that you want to engage with, and, and we don't give referrals out to just anybody. So we, we know that these women are going to empower you. They know, hey, they're a woman themselves, so they know what's going on. They know the challenges around women, about being a mother, being a grandmother, being a business owner, all those types of things. So we're going to be, it's going to be a powerful conversation. So every Monday, we want you to tune in for that. All right, I'm going to wrap up. I think we're already at the top of our hour. And thank you so much. Thank you, Nobaya. Thank you, Tiffany, for joining us today. You all have a fabulous week, okay?